Hi, I'm Mitch Shoemaker and today is day 57 of my doing 100 days of YouTube videos and focusing on today. So yay, I made it to day 57. Um, and I took a shower today and I really want to cut my hair. <laughs> Not that any of you care, it's just I don't think it's been cut in over a year and it's probably the longest it's ever been, which I always wanted really long hair, but um, it's just, I don't know, at a weird length it just gets in my way and I don't know what to do with it. I'm going to have to learn how to start doing fancy braids or something. Because <laughs> I just don't like my hair and my face. Um, and it just gets caught on everything now because it's so long. Not that you care about any of that. It's just, it's my hair today. Anyway. <laughs> I, I am grateful um, that my hair is long and that I was able to take a shower today. So I shouldn't be complaining about things like that. Um, it's funny, something I always wanted. And now it's just kind of annoying because I'm just not used to it. Um, Anyway, I'm rambling about random stuff that means absolutely nothing. It's just what pops into my head in the moment. Um, a little bit crazy today. Um, anyway, I am super tired today. I've been super tired today. I'm not really sure why. I feel like I have less energy today than I had yesterday. So getting myself to do anything today has been um, very difficult for me. But um, I've just decided if that's what my body's going to do, that's what it's going to do. So I'm just grateful I was able to take a shower and give a ride, a friend, a ride home. And I forgot something. <laughs> there we go. This is not high enough. This is weird. I'm sitting on my little exercise ball, but somehow doing this from the YouTube thing, it pictures me down a little bit, um, the camera is up higher? I don't know. It it adjusts it differently. So right now I feel like I'm like way too high and I'm cutting off my head. So <laughs> I'm trying to keep lifting this up high enough so I'm not cutting off my head. But I wanted to read something because I read my scriptures and meditationals today. I have not yet written in my journal, um, mostly because I'm just over by my bed and on my exercise ball tonight. So I'm like, hey, I'm trying. Um, and as long as I'm over here, I'm just going to do my video. And I still need to go make myself eat something. I'm not, I don't feel hungry, but I'm pretty sure I am hungry because it's been hours since I ate anything. It's probably been five or six hours since I ate anything. So I know that I need to eat and I should feel hungry. I'm just not, I don't know. I think sometimes I wait till I hear my tummy growling at me, which sometimes it does after like two or three hours and other times it, you know, doesn't. But um, I'm just <laughs> feeling really tired today and not having a lot of energy is, um, and trying not to be frustrated with it because I thought, because I was feeling a little bit better yesterday and still just chose to take it easy, that I would have plenty of energy today to do plenty of things. And it didn't work out that way. Um, but I did respond to a text message about a, a possible job. It's a temp job, but it's still a job. Um, so I have an interview over the phone tomorrow morning, which means I have to get up early, which is another reason to do my video right now, because the sooner I do it, the sooner I go to bed, right? Not an excuse to stay awake all night. Um, and, and that's a good thing. And I messaged my mentor today and asked her if she would be willing to critique, review my um, books. And she said to send them to her one at a time. So I sent her one of them today. Um, I was going to send her the Linoia book because I feel like that one's the closest one to being done because it's already gone out to beta readers once. It's been revised multiple times already. So I'm hoping it just has a few minor changes left and then it can be edited and published. Um, so that one's the closest to being done. But um, I decided for whatever reason, when I was doing the email to send her recognizing God's hand in my life, which I um, haven't bugged anybody else that I've sent that to as far as reviews go. So that's kind of like the first draft, still waiting for um, comments back so I know what to change and revise for the second draft. Um, well, technically, it's the second time because <laughs> I wrote it once and then I had to go back and rewrite it because it wasn't very good the first time. So then it's been revised for the second time, which I think is much better. But I know it still needs a lot of work to it. So um just going to have to wait for that. And then in the meantime, while I'm waiting, I have plenty of other books to work on. I haven't got to that point, but um, I did. Like I said, I responded to a couple of emails, um, filled out one job application online, moves from an email. Um, and then 
responded to a text message, so I have a phone call in the morning. So, I mean, I know things are falling into place. I know God is taking care of me and things are working, even though I don't have the energy to do anything. And I, I'm just thoroughly amazed because in the past when I've looked for jobs, it's like you have to fill out so many applications, constantly hunting, constantly applying and not getting a lot of um, responses in return. And <laughs> I don't feel like I've even put forth a hardly any effort, you know, like maybe an ounce of effort. Um, and I haven't even done anything on a daily basis. And I keep getting emails and other things and responses and possible things that I could do. And it's just like, oh, all I have to do is just go through and respond to this stuff or apply to these things. And it's just, it's so crazy. I just, you know, I think if it's something that I'm supposed to do or it's meant to happen, that God will make it happen. Um, and I just have to show up but at this point i feel like all i have the energy to do is just show up some days i'm not even sure i have that much energy but um there was a reading i wasn't going to read it today but i felt impressed that i needed to so i decided to listen and read that when i was doing my meditationals and um which is why i had to shrink my head even further with my books so i could get it it's out of this um Hope for Today, one of my um, Al-Anon meditational books that I talk about reading. Um, I don't, <coughs> um, anyway, there was, um, this was a really good reading. I don't, I kind of want to read the whole page, but I won't. <laughs> I won't, I'm just going to hit the little highlights and it's, if I can find the little highlights in it. But um, it's talking about going to a meeting and listened as other members shared about their mistakes and character defects, their their reactions to them, self-acceptance, making amends, and patience showed me that there are different ways to believe, to behave in the world. I started to apply the slogans, keep it simple, easy does it, and how important is it to my daily goals, choices, and actions. Um, and then it says, I realized that beneath my extreme competitiveness lurks the true nature of my problem, pride and fear, along with a sense of inadequacy. I'm afraid of not being liked, of making mistakes in front of others, of being vulnerable. In short, I'm afraid of being human. And I just, I don't know, it's one of those things where it just, it, it reaches out to me because I feel like it's me. It's like I'm reading someone else talking about myself. So one, I know I'm not alone. And two, it's just a reminder that, that I have those issues. I have that fear. I have, you know, and I never thought of myself as being prideful, but maybe I am because I think, you know, I things should work out my way or things should go my way or whatever. I don't, I don't know. It's not, um, anyway, but it, it's one of those things where I think I know all the answers or I think I know what I'm supposed to do. And maybe that is a form of pride that I need to like get rid of. Um, and not a healthy form of pride where I'm just proud of myself for doing good things. Like I'm doing this video anyway, but the fear of a sense of inadequacy is there. Um, and then I liked where it says, today I know that in trying to be better than, I am actually diminishing my opportunities for fun and spontaneity. And that that really hit me because trying to be better than, even if I'm just trying to be better than I was yesterday or better than I was previously or getting back to where I think that I'm supposed to be or whatever crazy thing it is, that I'm diminishing my opportunities for fun and spontaneity. And I was like, I like to have fun. I like to be spontaneous. I think those are amazing gifts and abilities and it everybody should be able to do that to just let go for a minute of whatever it is that's driving them crazy and just have some fun because sometimes just setting aside the problem or setting aside all the mundane stuff you have to do every day to do something fun just lightens your load and makes it easier to go back to whatever work you have to do we all need to take a break and sometimes spontaneously so um but I just thought it was interesting that thinking that I have to be better than or focusing on all the things I have to do takes away from my ability to have fun and enjoy my day and enjoy life. And then um, it says, I'm isolating myself from those people I wish to invite closer to my heart. Uh, I put myself in competition with my higher power and battling God's will for me. I risk losing the things I really want to win, um, which is, you know, it's, it's one of those things I think I've said multiple times where I have that internal struggle where it's like, I know what I want to do and I can't seem to make myself do it. And um, it's that fighting, ongoing fighting when I should just give up, stop fighting God, stop fighting myself, just let myself do 
what I, what, you know, I want to do, what I need to do to be healthy, to be happy, to have fun. And by trying to control the situation, by trying to figure it all out, by not being in today, um, by trying to figure out what, what's going to happen next week, next month, how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to do that. I'm so focused on other things that I'm just missing everything today and I'm just overwhelmed and stressed. And so this just kind of, I mean, this just kind of summed up all the things that I've been learning and doing and changes that I've been making. And it was like, <laughs> this is why, because this is why I'm so crazy because I, I do all those things and I need to let go of that. And then it has like a little thought for the day at the bottom that I'm going to read that I really like. It says, I need not always win, succeed, or be right to be worthy of acceptance and love. In fact, trying to do so may actually prevent me from receiving those very things I seek. So um, it is, again, it's focusing on myself instead of on other people. Because if I'm worried about getting other people's acceptance or love or not feeling like I'm good enough, I'm... I'm basically preventing myself from having the things that I want. I'm the person that's standing in my way of succeeding, of um, reaching my goals, of reading my writing my books. And um, I'm gonna raise my head up again. I'm sorry, <laughs> so I can put my book back. <laughs> there we go, a little better. But um, anyway, I realize a lot of times I'm the person that's standing in my way of success because I'm so worried about what other people think, or I'm so afraid of what the outcome is going to be or what's going to happen if I change. And so I don't change. I don't do those things. And so this has been um, an amazing, I want to say experiment, <laughs> challenge, whatever, trying to stay in today and find the positive things that I'm doing in today to not worry about how the bills are going to get paid tomorrow or <laughs> what's going to happen tomorrow, but, um, or what's, is or isn't going to work out because I don't, I don't know the outcome. So I'm trying to stop figuring out the outcome. I'm trying to stop worrying about what other people may think or feel and just, just do and just doing and just living and just, you know, having fun. I don't know how much fun I've been having because I've been sick, but, um, I've not been beating myself up. I've been much more gentle with myself, much more accepting of my situation and letting go of trying to control um, the outcomes. And um, I keep saying, I'm a lot, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know it makes a huge difference. It, it really does. And it just, that reading just kind of really hit me just as I was reading that, all the things that I've been struggling with. And it's like, I feel like I'm starting to overcome some of those things, but it's kind of cool for me to read stuff like that. That just kind of explains it, puts it all out into some terminology that I, you know, much nicer way that I could ever put it myself and be like, yes, I am afraid. Yes. I care too much about what other people think. Yes. I compare myself too much. And sometimes I compare myself to myself more than to other people, but you know what I could do when I was 20 and not 40, um, you know, what I could, what I could do before I got sick and what I, you know, all of those things, you know, what I could do when I, you know, was skinny and not overweight and out of, out of shape. And I, I compare myself to that and I compare myself to how I picture myself to be in the future, what I want myself to be and how far I, and all I see is how far away I am from reaching that goal. And I don't think, I mean, physically, I'm probably very far away from reaching a goal of being like healthy and, and losing weight and being, you know, the ideal size again or whatever. Ideal size for me, not ideal size for the world. Let me clarify that. I just want to be a healthy size and maybe like to get back to like size 10 because I have huge hips and huge. Yeah, I just, <laughs> there's no way I will ever be um, smaller than that. But I'd like to get back down to like, you know, somewhere between 140 and 160 pounds. Again, not, you know. I don't want to be anorexic or anything like that, but um, <laughs> I could stand to lose about half of me and I would still be here physically. Um, but I, I know that would take several months or years to get back down to that. If I will ever get back down to that again in my life, I don't know. That's, you know, feels like a, one of those long-term crazy goals that I just haven't even I don't have the energy to start that right now, <laughs> so there's no point to that. And if I do start exercising and doing things, it needs to be with the focus on just getting healthy and, and building energy and building muscle and not necessarily what my weight or size is going to be because I may not be able to control that. I may not be able to get back down to the weight or size that I want. And also setting a goal that's that 
big to lose that much is just, I'm learning from doing all of this. That's just insane. And it's not worth it, but I can set small goals, you know, of exercising or eating healthy um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And what can I, you know, change the little things that I can change. And, you know, the little things slowly add up and then eventually the bigger changes happen. But, you know, it's, it's funny because when I do the little things and the little things over time, like focusing on gratitude, my hundred days of gratitude and how that's sunk in and I've been grateful for things and how that's changed my perspective being sick and focusing on things that I'm grateful for and focusing on things that I can do instead of the things that I can't do and recognizing that I'm doing things and not being lazy and that, you know, this, just the reading and stuff today and, and recognizing again that I'm, I need to stop comparing myself to what I want to be and just be happy with who I am and enjoy what I have in the day and in the moment and what I, what I can do. And all of these little things have been slowly um, building up over time and have been getting internalized in me and the changes have just come and I haven't even been aware of them. Um, my friend was pointing out to me today that how much I've changed and <laughs> she's like, I don't even know if you see how much you've changed. And I was like, Nope. <laughs> I'm sure I have. I know I have. I, cause I feel a lot different. Um, I feel a lot happier than I've been in a long time and I can see my responses to things are very different than they used to be. There's some, still some things that I still feel like I respond the same way and the depression and other things is just so easy to go back into the negative thinking. Um, but it's a lot easier to overcome too. It used to be something that was difficult to overcome and now it's, it's getting easier to overcome and it's getting easier because it doesn't feel so big and overwhelming because of the little things that I've been doing that have been slowly internalized in me. So the big changes that I used to think I could just make overnight and get frustrated because I couldn't make them overnight have been slowly happening as I've been doing these videos, as I've been doing my writing, as I've been focusing on myself and focusing on today and what can I do today? And so the little things are making the big difference and it's making the big things possible. So I'm learning that if I want to accomplish a big goal, like losing a whole bunch of weight, that I have to start with something really small, start with, you know, what little thing can I do to get there? Like maybe changing my diet start with that what can i start eating healthier more of what can i start eating less of things like that and then i could start what little exercises or things can i do and how consistently can i do those little things and just build up little by little so i know if that's what i want to work on then that's what i can i can work on and i was thinking today what am i going to do for my next 100 days and then i stopped myself because i'm like you know what, I'm going to figure it out when I get there because the whole point of this 100 days is staying in today. It doesn't matter what I'm going to do tomorrow. And um, and it is, you know, again, my mind goes to stuff like losing weight and, and getting healthy. But my priority at this point is getting getting my energy back from this virus that I've had and getting building back up to just being able to do a full day's worth of work. And I didn't even have the energy to go to work today. I'm like, I'm lucky I found the energy to take a shower today to get dressed and get out of my house to give a friend a ride. And I told her I was glad for the opportunity to get out of the house just because it's nice to be around people. It's part of that whole, you know, being socially healthy, emotionally healthy. It, it helps to be around other people and being around other people, I think helps boost my spirits and, and my um, immune system, I think. So it kind of is an encouraging thing to get over the illness that I have, but it's still going to take time to get my energy back. And I think my body just reminding me, or maybe God's just reminding me today, not having any energy that I am still in the recovering process. I am not completely over this and I can't just you know, think of a thousand things I want to do or even 10 or 15 things that I want to do for the day and expect myself to do it because I may or may not have the energy to do it. So again, it's just what am I willing to do 
in the moment? What can I do in the moment? What do I have the energy to do? And sometimes I try to stand up to do something and my body's just like, yeah, that ain't happening. And I'm like, okay, then I guess that will have to wait until later because I just don't have the energy to do it right now. So to me, the fact that I opened up my laptop and checked a few emails is a positive thing that I was able to take a shower and get dressed. These are these are positive things and I'm grateful that I could do that and that I could read my scriptures and meditationals and see things that remind me that it's okay to be human, that it's okay to just enjoy today and the moment and I don't have to compare myself to how I was before I got sick or how I want to be. I don't have to feel like I'm way far behind on everything because I'm not really far behind and there's not really a way to catch up from anything that I should have done. It just means I have to work at things one day at a time and maybe eventually I'll get to where I want to be. <laughs> but there's a really good chance that if I keep doing things like this, I won't even realize when I get to where I want to be. It'll be one of those things where I look around one day and I'm like, wait, how did I get here? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I always feel like I'm still working. I still have so far to go. And I don't always take the time to look back and see the progress that I've been making. And so my progress may not be as far as like my physical health goes, but my progress as far as my spiritual health goes has been amazing. As far as my emotional health, oh my goodness, compared to last year, my emotional health and my perspective on life and my... I mean, it's just, it's like black and white. It's like day and night. It's so different right now than it was a year ago. Like I just, I can't even, you know, and there's still some things in my life that I wish were different that are still disappointing and depressing to me, but they're not taking over my everyday things. They're not um, controlling my mood or my day. They're not preventing me from living my life. And a year ago, it felt like they were. So it's, it's amazing that I am slowly getting out of my way so that I can move forward with writing my books or getting my books published. I'm getting out of my way by doing these videos, by overcoming my fear and sharing my life and my feelings and what I'm, what I'm doing and what I'm struggling with. And um, it's just, it's amazing the, the difference and how much better I feel about myself and towards myself um, and it's, it's also weird because I think there's still a part of me that still, you know, has that in the back of my head. Well, I'm, I could do more. I'm not saying that I'm not good enough, but maybe there's a part of me that still wonders that that's still seeking outside approval from other people or validation from other people. But I'm doing a lot better at validating myself and trusting, listening to God, validating me and feeling like I'm doing the right things and I'm on the right track and I'm, I'm getting better. And as I do that, I feel more confident about myself. I love myself more. And I think I'm more willing to do things. Um, but I still struggle because I'm not in the habit of, you know, cleaning and exercising and doing all of those other things that would be nice and good for my body when I'm healthy, um, not fighting some kind of illness. But <laughs> at the same time, you know, I know those are things that I've done in the past or things that I know I can work towards doing in the future. But I also know it's okay. I don't have to worry about those things today because I don't have the energy to do those things today. So they'll wait. They've waited this long. They can wait a little bit longer. And I am trying to do better at drinking more fluids and eating more frequently. Um, just because I know that's how part of how I will get better and get my energy back because I need to eat food and I need to get sleep in order for my body to heal itself. And if I'm not going to feed my body, I can't have energy. And if I'm not going to sleep, I can't have energy. So those are two things that I don't do well. <laughs> and then to have some kind of virus that drains my energy is, is not good either. So it's kind of, like I said before, <laughs> this is kind of forcing me to learn to pay attention to how often I'm eating and eating a little bit better, drinking more fluids um, and sleeping. I feel like I sleep way too much right now. <laughs> but apparently if I can sleep, then my body must need the sleep. So I am grateful for when I can sleep. And I am I am grateful that I'm able to, to do things a little at a time and to be just grateful for the little things that I can do. It's so 
so amazing how much that gratitude is internalized in me and has changed my outlook and perspective on everything. So, and it's not even been a year since I started the whole gratitude list thing. So that's, um, maybe it's close to one. I don't know. It's been like 257 days now, right? I think something like that because I started with gratitude and then did writing. So yeah, and there's like 356 days in a year. So I've got another 100 days or something before I've done like a whole year of um, being grateful for things. <laughs> Assuming I've said something I'm grateful for in all of my other videos, I don't really pay attention to that. Um, but it's it's because it's just become a part of me to say the things that I'm grateful for. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for the, the random insights I get out of reading things of, you know, feeling like I'm not alone, that other people are going through the same struggle or reading something that just um, puts into words what I've been feeling. And it kind of like, oh, I get it now. I get it now. This is what I'm struggling with. It makes sense now. Um, so I hope in some small way, the things that I'm saying in these videos maybe do the same for you and be like, oh, you're not alone. Hey, you're another human crazy person too. Or maybe something I'm saying um, as I'm figuring out for myself maybe helps you to figure things out for yourself of something that you're struggling with emotionally, spiritually, or whatever it may be. So um, I do hope that these videos are as helpful to you as they are to me, but I think I will probably still get more out of sharing all of this than... Um, you get out of watching these videos. It's kind of like being a teacher when you, because you have to prepare the lesson and then you share it and then you get the insights from all the students or the people in the class and um, you feel like you learn a lot more as the teacher. So I feel like I learn a lot more from doing these videos um, than you could possibly glean from them. But I do hope that they are helpful in some form or another, even if it's just entertainment to watch the crazy lady babble about whatever insane thing is going on in my life. <laughs> What whatever works for you. So um, if you like these videos, you can hit like, subscribe, or if you think they're helpful or might help someone else, you can share them with someone else too. And I think that's all I have today. So I hope you have a great day full of gratitude and maybe do some writing.